morning. My name is Karen Reinhold, and I am a senior at Cook Penn University with a dual major in elementary and special education. I hope to someday in the near future teach middle school autistic or learning support students. I also serve on the executive board for Student PSEA, <clears throat> the members of Pennsylvania State Education Association who are college students preparing to become educators. I am here today speaking on behalf of 10,000 student PSEA members from across the state. When I was asked to present this testimony, I started to think about how student loans and the cost of college has affected my life personally. I have been fortunate enough, enough to have two parents that are able to fully support my brother and I and our dreams of going to college. I often hear my parents talking about loans and how much the cost of college has completely changed their lives. I recently sat down and talked to my mom about what she and my father have done to pay for, my, for mine and my brother's college tuition. From mortgaging the house to applying for every loan that they could, my parents have done everything they could to make it work. Although my parents have had to learn to manage their money in order to pay over $60,000 a year in college tuition, I know that this is reality for families and many students who are, e who are my age or even younger. I decided that I would reach out to some of my friends and peers and hear their stories about dealing with college loans and trying to just get by day to day. I started with my roommate, Danielle Miller. Living with Danielle for the past three years, I've often heard her worries about leaving school and having tens of thousands of dollars to pay off in loans. She currently is balancing four jobs along with 15 credits worth of schoolwork while still maintaining a 3.7 GPA. She is remarkable. How does she balance it all? When she graduates in May, she will be thrown into a world where she, where she is expected to pay off $36,000 with a starting teacher salary that averages less than $38,000. How is that possible? How is that fair? Then I decided to reach out to her boyfriend, Dean Caligarakis. I met Dean about one year ago and often have long conversations about him and his money struggles. When I asked him to sum up how he feels about the situation about loans at this time, his comment was, sim was simply overwhelming. Currently, he is two months behind on his rent because the bank was unable to provide Dean with a loan even though he has been receiving loans for the past three years. How could the bank cut off Dean's loans right at the end of his college career? And finally, I spoke with a close friend, John Horvath. Living, <coughs> living in a single family household, money has always been a struggle for John and his family. Like Dean, for the past three years, he has been receiving loans from the bank. Just last week, John sent in paperwork for his loans, and the bank denied him the money that he needed to pay for his last semester of his college career. Now, not only does John have to worry about keeping up his grades, he also is forced to get another job in addition to the one that he already has, just so that he can finish up his last year of college. I know these stories are not unique. In fact, they are terribly common. According to the project of student debt, approximately 70% of graduating students left school with a debt in 2006. The average debt that year was $22,776. That amount was an 8% increase from just one year previous. In 2005, the average student debt was $21,026. In 2006, it was $22,775. And we don't even know yet what the average has grown to in 2008. Also, I have to point out the figure $22,776 is the average. That means there are an awful lot of Pennsylvania graduate, graduates with even more debt than that. Although it is dubious honor to, to rank in the top 10 list, the project ranks Pennsylvania among the 10, student, 10 states in the country with the highest average. When I was doing my research to present this testimony, I was very sad to see that some of the highest college debt loans are being carried by those who can least afford to pay it back. Did you know that students graduating from Lincoln University, a public university in eastern Pennsylvania, in 2006 carried away an average debt burden of $28,858? That is over $6,000 more than the, national, than the state average. Lincoln University is a historically black university that serves large numbers of low-income students with limited resources for financial aid. So these Lincoln students are going to have to get some pretty high-paying jobs right away in order to pay back these enormous debts. I can tell you that those Lincoln students who want to become teachers 
aren't going to be earning those magnificent <coughs> salaries if they stay in education. Because in part of the state, the average starting teacher salary is below $38,000. It just doesn't seem fair. This sounds like lots of numbers, but I hope that by talking about my own situations and my friends' situations, you can see the faces of Pennsylvania's young adults who are starting out their professional lives carrying a burden of debt that I believe was unheard of for prior generations of college graduates. This is particularly painful in light of the fact that today, having a college education is more necessary than ever before in obtaining a job. I can't even begin to tell you how to fix this problem. I can only tell you that the problem, what the problem is and ask you to please do something for the future graduates. It's too late for me as I'm graduating in May with all my debt already incurred. If you can craft a solution, please make sure that it increases need-based grant aid, lowers interest rates on student loans that, so that they are more affordable, allow for refinancing of existing loans at the lower interest rates, and expands loan forgiveness programs for those entering critical public service careers, such as teaching. If you can manage to achieve these four changes, I believe you'll be helping Pennsylvania's college students tremendously. I'm sure all of you, all of the other witnesses who will be testifying before you will also have these ideas. On behalf of PSEA's 10,000 student members who want very much to become educators in Pennsylvania, I thank the Student State Board of Education and the Board's Council of Higher Education for conducting these hearings and trying to identify solutions to the problem of, <coughs> of the too high cost of higher education. I am proud that Pennsylvania policymakers are trying to make sure that higher education is a path to success, not a road trip, not a, not a road to permanent debt. Thank you.